Hey guys, how you doing? Today, I'm gonna be trying to cut the hood from this uh, Camaro. Uh, you might recognize it. This is one of the new casting that do not open the hood. So that's why I wanna cut it. As you can see this one, it has a marking around this area where it is actually where the original car opens up the hood. If you take a look at the ones that have opening hood, you can see it doesn't have that feature. The hood opens all the way to the front. All right. So this one, I wanna make the cut, or at least try. Uh, you're gonna need one of these saws. Of course, not this one. Look, that one is real big. You're gonna have to get one of these. Get it out of the bag. I haven't used this in a long time. These are really fragile. There are different types of blade. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Just let me put it next to the one so you can see the, the size difference. Look at that. All right, put the big one away. Now this one. Let me see. You can see the teeth on one side. There is one that is rounded. I wish I, I would have one because I think that would be perfect for this job. Because once I get to that corner, all I gotta do is start cutting the other way. But this one is gonna be a little bit more difficult. But we're gonna try it anyways. And let me open this up. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it inside, right? And I'm gonna use this attachment with my Dremel, the little ball, and I'm gonna eat the metal way, uh, but, you know, to a point where I could, you know, basically maybe try with a flat tip screwdriver, try to poke at the line, and once I get that little hole, I could slide this in and start cutting. So uh, before I before we start, I wanted to show you some uh, something I've been looking at. All right, so you know that the original, this one, it has the engine, right? So it has this piece of metal attached here. Right, that's where it holds the engine. Since the new one doesn't have that, what they did was they created these tabs to fill up that hole. So I was thinking that maybe there were uh, similar cars, but it turns out they're completely different. Uh, so I don't know if you can see the, the back window is different. And the best way I could demonstrate this. Okay, this is the the windshield from the black car. It looks almost identical to a uh, heavy Chevy windshield. That one right here. Check it out. The heavy Chevy comes with a little tap here. This one has it, just way bigger. Look at the interior of the, that's, that'll be an 80s Camaro, right? And this is the interior from a heavy Chevy. Check it out. They are very close. So in the event that you need to restore a heavy Chevy, it's not gonna be a direct fit, because check this out. This is the, the heavy Chevy interior. This is 82 Camaro.
it's kind of tight. You kind of have to push it in. But, you know, it kind of works. So that means that the Heavy Chevy, the old casting, it's uh, wider than these new ones. Now, my bet is that uh, the new windshield, it's gonna work on the old car, but the old windshield is not gonna work on the new car. Because the new car has like this big blob of metal here. The original has it, but way smaller. So I think if I if I drill that, it'll be able to fit, right? Since I uh, I don't like the red windows, that's an option I have right here. It looks like it uh, it could work. Look at the back. So that's an option that I have. Now on the white one, right? Here's the base from the 82. Check it out. So if you wanted to make a new one with the metal base, it kind of looks like it works on the front side, but it, it doesn't line up on the back now if you line it up on the back then it doesn't line up on the front look at that so they made sure that the car was not compatible I mean I could you know I if I really want to I, I think I could make it fit because this will be the like once I take off the hood, I think I might be able to get that metal base in there. Now, be better if I could use this one from a old heavy Chevy. But this one is completely different too. Look at this. Look how much it sticks out. And it really doesn't even line up anywhere near close as the old one. That's the other one. So they really made sure that uh, we're not, didn't have interchangeable parts here. Again, you know, I could finesse this and bend it and get it to work. But we'll see what happens. I might be able to do that because I'm not, you know, I'm not planning on using this base anymore. If you don't know why I have this base, uh, you need to watch my heavy chevy videos and you'll get an idea why i have it now on this one it doesn't line up either check it out it lines up a little better than the on the white one but check it out I think I have better luck installing it on the white. So I just wanted to share that uh, little bit of information in case you have, uh, if you, in case you want to restore a uh, heavy Chevy. I mean, the windshield alone it's worth like uh, five dollars on eBay. And this is the windshield from the white one. The white one doesn't have the the dot metal dot here. But you see, you see, it's smaller besides the opening, smaller. See the gap, so it's not even the, not even close. All right, so let me pick this up, and uh, I'm gonna do this off camera. Try to grind here and here, and. Uh, once I have some progress, I'll be back. All right, guys, as you can see, I uh, went over with the Dremel and I got the opening. It turns out the flat tip screwdriver was too big, but I think I could fix that little. 
that little hole right there nothing big but I now have a little hole where I could slide in the blade for the saw all right so let me try to cut this and I'll be back Alright fellas, we are back. Check it out. Might seem that I messed up here, but actually what's crooked is the temple. I did follow the line. Here on this side, the car moved a little. But you know, it's really not that important. I still got perfect hood well almost perfect pick it up all we gotta do now is fix this little hole right here and we should have a roof I mean a hood a working hood now we that we don't have the rivet stud if I align it on the back now it fits now the metal chassis fit check it out check it out now let's try out the Original heavy Chevy. Let me see if I can align it. I might have to see it. It's the old one, the old thing, it's wider. So I don't want to damage the chassis. So I either might pry it open a little bit or take up some metal that way it could fit in here I think I could get it if I could get that back in there I could definitely get this to work I'm pretty sure if I line it in the front Might be able to get it. Might be able to use this old chassis here. Might turn it into the heavy Chevy. So let me take out some material from here and here and the front. Like this big chunk here. I think that's getting in the way. And I'll be back. Well, boys, check it out. Let him massage and I was able to get it to fit. Check it out. I think I still need, see one side is kind of flush. The other one is not. I have to keep grinding here. So the chassis could fall into place. Check it out. Everything I had to do here in the back, here in the front. But I think I have it. Now, as you all know, that heavy Chevy that I have that is damaged has that interior part. So I gotta try to cut it out from the old car and put it in this one, which is gonna give me the base for the engine. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be using the original heavy Chevy engine, because if I do, then I won't be able to close the hood. So I need something smaller. And I think I have the perfect car for that. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Cut this, right, and uh, 
I'll be back in the next step. As you can see here, the as I was doing with the Dremel here, sometimes it goes around and that's all right. You know, something that we could sand down and once it's ready for paint again, uh, you won't be able to see it. Oh, you know, I almost had it where I didn't have to repaint it, but it's kind of hard, you know, not to get it scratched up. All right, All right let's use a quick step. update. I cut this. I still have, I have to. I have to run it down, make it completely flat. All right, cut this. So it seems that's gonna, gonna have like a perfect fit, right? But to be able to continue, I have to completely grind this down, do or mug up the mechanism, which is gonna open the hood, right? That will determine if I have to cut somewhere around here on the side for the mechanism. And once I have the engine installed here, I can play with the height, see where I need to put it somewhere where the hood can close. Okay, so that'll be the next step. All right guys, what is up? Check it out. So update, so you can see I fixed the little hole right here. So what I've done so far is that I use a screw to hold this together. I am not gonna leave the black wall wheels on it but as I sit right now I think it might be too low so if we put it here you can see that uh, since the heavy Chevy and the 67 original 67 Camaro the hood opens all the way to the front the radiator is covered right but I don't want to move it back because I need space for the mechanism to open up the hood. So I think I'm thinking that right there should be good. And I'm still gonna have to modify, you know, cut on the side, but I think it's gonna work better. And I'm gonna have to raise it. So I got this car. This one has a new LS engine in there and a lot of cool details. But if I use this one, I basically can use the, the base. So right now, I'm uh, not really sure what to do. So even though, even if I don't use this, it's, you know, automatically I'm gonna have to trim it down to be able to fit in here. But I might go with this one. This one is a lot smaller. If I cut it, might be able to fit perfectly inside inside here yeah so right now I'm in between you know between which one I'm gonna use now so you see already fitted everything it's already aligned. I wanted this to go back because the radiator, you know, would have been perfect to hold the the hood aligned with the body. So that's something. Now the first thing I gotta do now is create the mechanism for the hood. So if you've seen my previous videos, you know that I use uh, these uh, tubes. 
These are 116, right? They come in aluminum and brass. And I also have these rods here. They are 0.032 inches. And basically they are the same size as an axle. here I already cut a piece of that tubing and it fits inside right this is where the basically the hinge is gonna swing open now if you don't want to go out and buy all this right cuz uh, I think Hobby Lobby has some some of this stuff but I don't think it has everything you could go and get uh, one of these uh, valves to uh, fill up your basketball basically cut through that hole right here once you cut that you can use that as a tube and a paper clip pick it up okay now we got to do is cut it the size I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna use this because the space that I have here is real small and I you know I think this is gonna work a lot better but in the event that you don't have anything you want to use this you know might as well right if you it's if it's more accessible to you so uh, right now what we need to do is create a few bends here once I start doing that I'll be back okay all right guys so basically once you have this little tube, you bend both sides 90 degrees, right? So once you have it 90 degrees, you could uh, basically eyeball it here. And right now, that's how it's gonna look when the hood is open. So when the hook close it, it's that little curve is gonna be somewhere around here. Guess I still have to bend this side. And I'll show you, I'm gonna be using my round nose or needle nose pliers here, which are perfect for this job here. I wanna get real close here. I'm gonna try to replicate both sides as much as I can. That should be good. Right there. So basically what you want is that the little curve basically gonna hold the, the hood open right it's gonna open way too much there but you know that's not a bad idea so now the best thing you could do is glue this right here and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna be using crazy glue right and the old trick of baking soda. So basically you dab crazy glue here, you hold it somewhat where you want it, and you throw in some baking soda. That baking soda, uh, the only thing it does is it's gonna harden the crazy glue automatically. You're gonna have a, a bond real quick. All right, let me move the camera so you all can see this and I'll be back.
All right, guys, so you just saw that uh, basically the crazy glue reacted automatically, right? I can see a little gap, right? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, and apply uh, more glue and a little more baking soda just to make sure that this is on there tight. All right, so I added a little more now. I don't know if you can see. I think I have too much there, but I could just get one of my files and uh, sand that down a little bit. All right, so now what we gotta do is create the other bends, right, and Basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the hood and hold it in place with tape. Just so I can, you know, I get a, an idea where I have to bend and everything, okay? So I'll be back. All right, guys, so this is basically using tape here to hold the hood in place. You can see, this is what I, what I did. That's basically that curve is going. What's going to do is when the hood opens, right? It's going to basically hook around the body, right? So the way I did this, if you were following, get this here, bend down. Try to make them about the same. I think that should be good right there. See if you were using paper clips, it'll be a lot, you know, a lot harder to do these bends. But with this brass, it's uh, a lot easier. So right now, it seems that I need to adjust so they all, they both end up being the same. So it looks like I need to bend here. Right. Pull it a little. So this is basically all you gotta do, you know, you gotta play with it until you get everything straight. And after this, we gotta do the same process again. Glue, baking soda, and uh, so you can glue everything in place. Once I do that, I'll be back. All right, guys, check it out. hood so right now it's pretty good in here a little tight but I think I'm gonna leave this right because if I was going to use it, I'm going to have to cut this whole part here. And I think I'm going to go with this. I think it's going to make everything a lot easier. A whole lot easier. So I'm going to cut this and uh, test fit it. Okay. All right. Check it out, fellas. All I gotta do now is sand down the bottom of the engine so I could lower it and the hood could close 
but definitely this one I think this one looks a lot better check it out so that's gonna take it's gonna take some time once I have that perfected I'm thinking about see right there it's rubbing on the wheels so I gotta sand all that down make everything underneath and uh, I still don't know if I'm gonna glue this to the base or the car if I do it to the car then I'm gonna have to wait until I paint it either way you know I still have to clean the the base and change out the tires but yeah it's a quick update and I'll see you All in the fellas. next video. This is day number three. So if you thought that you can make a custom in 10 minutes, you are crazy. But old jokes aside, here it is. Check it out. Finally he was able to get it in there. If I want to make it straight, I'm gonna have to cut the size the side because right now it's on top of the of the wheels see and it won't close if I do that I gotta cut a big chunk here and basically the engine is not gonna look as good you know it's not gonna fill up the engine bay as much I really wanted it to for it to sit right here you know but thinking about it I do not own any black wall cars right now. That heavy Chevy that uh, the last one I bought was the only one. So, been thinking about it. And I think I'm gonna go with the, the original heavy Chevy Bay engine bay. And basically run the original stock engine and have a custom right a custom uh, Camaro looking like a heavy Chevy of course uh, this one doesn't have since it's a, a 67 version doesn't have the rear spoiler but I have that on the on the other car so I'm you know I can either make it out of something else or cut it out from the other car so that's one option and check it out they, you might think they look the same but look at that rear window very different on the new car and if you've seen uh, if you watch my previous videos you can tell that um the heavy Chevy chairs the inside windows with the, the original 67 Camaro. So everything is basically the same thing. It's the same car. The only thing that changes is that uh, the Camaro has a hood with a lower engine. The heavy Chevy has a uh, permanent engine bay there with a taller engine. So uh, next time you see this car, it's going to be... A modified heavy Chevy okay but at least you got to see the opening hood and how to do it so the next shot will be paint oh actually I have to glue this in and uh, paint the car which color don't know yet see you in a few seconds well with the magic of youtube and editing will be automatic right, fellas it's uh day number four check it out so you can see i installed the engine bay with the engine check out those black walls i recently did the electro polish so you see 
might go over it with uh, some blue magic. Try to buff it up a little, but not really worry about that. So you see, I just installed uh, one of the water slide heavy chevy decals just to measure, you know, to get an idea since this is a different casting, you know, uh, see how it fits right now. I don't think I'm going to be using these decals. I might do a combination between lines and uh, the fire that came in the Camaro. I don't know if you guys recognize that. But right now, you know, I still don't know. Uh, definitely, I'm not going to go with the uh, electro, I mean, how do you call it? Spectra flame, spectra flame paint. Because you see this casting, uh, I mean, it's not the best. You see all that marks? And it has a nasty one on this side. I don't know if you can see it underneath the decal. For that reason, you know, definitely going enamel. Check it out under here. So I uh, presented this, used uh, crazy glue with the little baking soda just to hold it in place. And then I uh, used the gel cover up all the areas here and here all the big gaps then I use baking soda on both side uh, with this it doesn't dry as fast as uh, crazy glue since it's a thicker uh, glue so basically it's been overnight so uh, from this angle it seems like right here it's not straight and I removed this about three times but like right now the engine is a little crooked but that's because of the screw but if we cover this up uh, the rest of the car looks aligned to me I mean I did this I uh, eyeballed it and it's not like I measured got the center right here of the radiator so to me it you know looks center not really worry about that so you see this is still wet uh, yeah so so likely my next step is going to be primer and uh, paint. But before I do that, I'll basically spend a few hours redrawing everything. Making, you know, the decision what, uh, what decals I'm going to be using. I don't know. I don't remember if I told you I had to cut the post here. But I'm going to be doing a little something new a new trick I don't, I don't think i've showed you before and uh you're gonna see the end result here all right so i'll see you in the next step all right fellas day five. Oh, oh i'm wearing gloves because um i'm a doctor now so uh so day five came and left we are on day six i spent uh much of day five in part of today making the cows and uh, all the artwork and uh, if you're following me and have not skipped through this long video you know that uh, I have uh, some uh, heavy Chevy that I want to restore right so uh, let me adjust the light here a little bit um, so I might as well create it and you know I also created the the artwork for the heavy chevys and uh previously on this video i mentioned that i was gonna show you another method on closing the cars so you remember this car was uh the original engine donor and uh 
I had opened this car with the soldering iron, right? When you do that, you end up with a perfect uh, post like this right here. So uh, what I did basically was that I uh, cut, I cut the, the post. Uh, one thing to notice is that uh, all, most cars, the front, I mean, not always the front, but most, I say 90% of the, the time, the front post is the color of the car. I've seen very little cars that the rear is the color of the car. Mentioning that, we have here the chassis, right? And look and behold, I've already cut them to size. And so uh, if you haven't seen my uh, video on how to open a Hot Wheels without using a drill, you're not going to understand. So you need to go watch that. So you know how I opened this one. That only works on a pla plastic base, right? So this one should give you a hint on what color I painted the car. Since I just mentioned that uh, the front, the front uh, is always the same color as the car. Check it out. See, the rear is always bare metal. The front is uh, the same color as the car. So if you thought that if you were buying a metal chassis car and uh, the error was legit, you need to think it over. As you can see, you can replicate that. So basically, I don't think I, don't think I showed it. So you cut it, the post from another car, right? You could either open the car using my uh, method, or if you don't care about the car, you could go from the, the top and cut it. Then you need to uh, basically hold the car, the I mean the post here, and grind on it with your Dremel, so it'll it'll basically go from top side down. So you need to make it skinny, all right? And now all I gotta do is uh, use the same method as before. Maybe some crazy glue, some uh, baking powder here, just to hold them in place. And once I do that, I will be back. Or back. You ready? Of course, this is not it. I just wanted to show you what we started with. We started from a 67 Camaro from this series. This is the original right here. And this is what we ended with. Check it out. So the original uh, 82 Camaro that came with these uh, flames it was yellow and white. The car was red. I kind of flipped it over a little bit. I uh, painted the car white, did what was supposed to be white red, and I ran um, red stripes like a heavy Chevy. We still got to glue this back together. It's in the process, but once it goes uh, dry, this is how it's going to look. Like it was never open, like a stock car. Got the TH logo right there, the DSC TH logo. And uh, I think right about now will be a good time for you to subscribe and like this video. Share it with your friends. I know this is supposed to be black, but I kind of like it like that. I think the hardest part would be uh, was uh, painting that engine bay in black without messing everything up. So here it is, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. I know this is a long video, but you know, I you keep editing video, making them real short. 
and people think that uh, making something like this is a 10 minute job, which it isn't. So let me know what you guys think. Please subscribe. And if you're watching this video on Facebook, uh, come over to YouTube and subscribe. Hit that little bell so you don't miss any video updates. Check this out. This 67 Camaro Heavy Chevy. I don't know. Give me a name. Uh, write in the comments a name. This is what we started with. Alright, so thank you for watching. Peace out.